Hello and welcome to another Stockyard video. My name is Richard Whittington, Sales Executive for the Stockyard team. Today I'm going to work through how to seam out a topside. I've chosen a Wagyu topside to work with today. Uh, it's quite an interesting piece of meat, there's a lot going on. I'll uh, work you guys through how we're going to seam out each of the individual five muscles um, and talk through some of the uh, steps and processes to get this piece of meat looking the best it can and get the most out of it for you guys in the kitchen. So as you can see, we've got a bit to deal with. The inner surface, we've got some veins, connective tissue, silver skin. So we want to probably clean up all of this surface area before we start any work so we can see what we're dealing with in its entirety before we start seaming. So what I'm going to do first is we're going to, work, we're going to leave the cap on. I'm going to use that it's a nice flat surface to play with and we can start trimming. So putting a little bit of extra work in here at this stage will give you a better result at the end because you can end up over trimming. It's very easy to lose track of where you are and obviously yield wise we don't want to lose too much of that lean meat because that can be used in your diced, sliced, stir fries, buffets, mince. So we just need to get in and start, try and remove some of the veins there's a vein that will run along here and a section of one muscle into the other. So we just want to seam in and you can see I'm attacking that now. Vein's not very good eating, can't do much with those. So you can see the second vein here. So that'll run down in through there. So we just want to pay attention to that and get that out of there. We've trimmed down our uh, inner surface to expose four of the five in total muscles. So this side here, great for roasting. This side here is more marbled, lends itself to other, other methods of cookery. So you can see now I've trimmed up the, uh, the inner surface and we've exposed our seams. So I'm ready to start pulling this apart as best I can. I'm still gonna leave the cap side down to give me a flat surface to work with. And what I wanna do is start taking out these smaller muscles first. So I'll take the opportunity just to have a look at the seams. You can see they're quite delicate. Use your fingers just to, just to pry apart as much as you can. You'll get a better visual representation of where you need to, to look. Just be gentle with your knife because you don't want to be nicking too much of the, the, the meat. But you can see just a very fine membrane holding most of these muscles together. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to separate the cap and we'll take that off and that should make it a little easier to work with. And it'll also give your cap nice form. So you can see the cap starting to come off now and we're starting to reveal the uh, surface of our roasting cuts. All right, so we've taken the cap off and we're left now with the outer surface to play with. So we can start trimming this side up and exactly the same as the underside, just trying to remove that silver skin and as very little meat as possible, especially with the roasting cuts, it'll just gristle up on you. So we've taken off our cap and one of the smaller muscles, you can see we've got three to go here. So just use your fingers to find these seams. So you can see this one sort of folds over. This is probably one of the trickier because the seam is next to impossible to find. Just be gentle and look for that very fine connective tissue. So back with the cap. We've got a little muscle here. So what I want to do is just separate that from the cap. You can leave it on if you wanted to, but once you separate that out, you can see it's like a backstrap almost. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. We've managed to seam out all five muscles from the top side. After a couple, it's, it's pretty easy. You just got to get into the rhythm of it. It's just about understanding where the seams are, how delicate they are, and um, also what you want to do with the muscles. We've got five muscles out of one primal all can be cooked very differently in different, with different methods of cookery. So the cat lends itself to grilling a bit like a, a, perhaps a flank or, or even a flat, um, flat grill, high heat Mexican, beautiful flavour. Moving over to the smaller cuts, 
the muscle fibres will run a similar direction so they can be rolled and shaped. So with a bit of further preparation, Chef Leslie will show you how we can prepare these to be very uniform for your kitchen operation and, and output. And then we have these two cuts here, both personally lend themselves to roasting. This muscle in particular, it can be sliced for steaks, same as this, I, I, there's plenty of guys that are staking it. So versatile cut, plenty of options, little bit of work to get everything out of it. Your trim is mainly usable. You get a little bit of the silver skin, the, the veins, all those things that we talked through. Overall, not a bad yielding product and one that can be utilised in a versatile manner throughout your kitchen. So hopefully you've been able to stay with me as I've seen that out and hopefully you've got some ideas and some inspiration. And I look forward to seeing what you're able to do with the top side in the future. Thank you, it's another Stockyard video.